Okay guys, today we have to talk about winter in Iceland because honestly, that can be terrifying. Hey Team Iceland, my name is Jeannie and I am your tour guide for all things Iceland planning. Today we're talking about winter in Iceland, specifically weather and driving. Now these are some hot topics that go on in my Facebook group. So I am so excited to get into this topic today. I think it's really, really important because although a lot of people usually travel to Iceland in the peak times, meaning May to September, winter is becoming a really popular time in Iceland with good reason. There's some beautiful things that happen in Iceland in the winter, specifically those um, northern lights. <laughs> If you are wondering how you can see the Northern Lights in Iceland, then click right here to learn more. So if you've been wondering about how to prepare for your winter trip in Iceland, don't worry, I've got you covered. Let's get into it. Now when I talk about winter in Iceland, I'm referring to any time between November and March slash April. That is your true winter in Iceland. One thing that I do want to say about winter is to not be afraid of it. Unless you're coming from like a very tropical area where you're not used to being cold, Iceland in the winter is so beautiful. I just love it. It's unbelievable. You have these beautiful golden hour sunsets casting the most picturesque glow on the sky. It makes for great photo taking. And then also the landscape is incredibly beautiful at this time. So everything is just covered in this beautiful blanket of snow and everything just looks amazing. So don't be afraid to come to Iceland in the winter. First off, let's talk about the weather. A lot of people are thinking because you're going to Iceland and it's covered in ice and it's near the Arctic Circle that it's going to be really, really cold. But you might be a little bit surprised to know that Iceland doesn't actually get that cold. The temperature around the main areas stays between 28 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit or for you non-Americans, minus two to up to four degrees centigrade. I don't really think that that's cold and I grew up in Wisconsin and we used to have like minus 30 degree temperatures so that's cold. Of course during these times you're going to expect snow. Reykjavik being right on the coast doesn't always get a lot of snow. So if you're staying more in the city, you don't need to plan for big snow boots or snow that comes up to the rooftops or anything like that. Sometimes you can be in Reykjavik and there's not much snow around at all. As you get interior a little bit more, and that includes the Golden Circle, you're going to expect to see a lot more snow and then it can even get a little bit colder. Another place that doesn't always get a lot of snow is actually Vik and the Black Sand Beach in South Iceland. And this is for the same reason. It's right on the coast and so a lot of times if there is a snowfall it'll be semi-melted the next day so you won't get such heavy snow. But in general of course you still do want to be prepared for snowy conditions during winter. Now if you are heading to Iceland in the winter then get super excited because next week I have a video coming out all about packing tips for your winter travel. This is going to include what to pack for your trip, what to wear when you're exploring, what to wear when you're going out in Reykjavik, and all of the helpful things. So make sure to come back next week for that video. Now, pro tip, really, really be prepared for ice. I'm talking about icy, icy walkways around those waterfalls. So important to you guys to have a pair of crampons for your feet. Yak tracks are a really, really minimal investment. You're talking around $20, $25 on Amazon. And I'll include a link in the description below so you can get to my favorite pair. But you wanna be prepared for icy conditions, especially around those waterfalls. It's crazy, you guys. And I'm talking especially around cellulose floss. I've seen people like, sliding down on their butt just to get back safely without falling and like breaking a limb. So the spray from that waterfall can get really, really intense and make it really dangerous around those areas. So do yourself a favor and make a little bit of an investment for some crampons. 
Next up, the Icelandic wind. <laughs> Everyone's favorite topic. You guys, honestly, the temperatures in the snow is not going to be what gets you in Iceland. It's the wind. Now, the wind applies to any time of year. It can be so intense, and I'm talking like hurricane force winds, <laughs> especially the wind comes into play in winter for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's already cold, 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 right? So adding the wind on top of that is going to add a wind chill factor and make it feel so much colder. And I mean like, cut right through you, <laughs> chill you to the bone, really cold winds. The other thing that's really, really important is the wind is going to cause snow drifts on the road. And so, you know, especially if there's been a recent snowfall and then a heavy wind picks up, that snow is just gonna be blowing across the road and it makes it so hard to see and it makes it really, really challenging driving conditions. I recommend checking the website vather.is to check for these things like temperature, if snow is in the forecast, and then especially for the winds. You really, really want to know if the wind is going to play a factor in your day because that might force you to change your plans just enough. Next up, let's talk about driving. So if the weather doesn't get you nervous about travel to Iceland, usually driving makes people really nervous. And this is for a couple of reasons. Number one, because you're gonna be driving more during dark hours. You don't get a lot of sunlight in the winter months. So a lot of people are getting a little nervous about driving in the dark. But then also, they're worried about the road conditions, right? They're worried about the snow we just talked about and the ice and the visibility and all of these crazy factors that play into planning a road trip in a safe manner. So I wanna ease your mind a bit about road tripping in Iceland during the winter because it can still be really safe and amazingly fun if you're prepared. Now the first thing that I would suggest is to simply plan your itinerary by sticking to the main routes. And this includes places around Reykjavik, the Golden Circle, South Iceland, and into the Snæfellsnes Peninsula. So even if there was a big snowstorm or there's a lot of ice on the roads, these are the areas that the road service will attend to first. You're not gonna wanna plan like those little hidden gem places or trying to take some back um, road that might look like a shortcut because those roads will not be maintained and oftentimes those roads will be completely shut down. My second piece of advice for driving in the winter in Iceland is to make sure that your car has winter tires. Now, this could be anything from tires that have just extra grip on them, better for ice, better for snow, or some companies might put studded tires on. You just wanna make sure with your rental car company that they do have winter tires, just for added protection. Now, a lot of people are asking me whether they should rent a two-wheel drive or a four-wheel drive vehicle. This is, of course, up to personal preference, but I have to tell you, I had a really, really scary situation happened to me. Well, I mean, I put myself into the situation, but that's besides the point. Where I traveled to the Snifelessness Peninsula one day in February by myself in a two wheel drive vehicle. And it was the scariest driving situation I've ever been in. The weather was great, the sky was blue, and I really thought it was gonna be okay. But the roads were so icy, it was unbelievable. And there came a point where the winds really picked up and I honestly felt like the car was gonna blow off the road. Since that situation happened to me, I always urge people to be on the safe side and rent a four wheel drive vehicle. So my next tip, rent a four wheel drive vehicle, please. I know they're more expensive, but wouldn't you rather be safe than sorry? These vehicles are heavier, so you're gonna feel more confident and comfortable when you're driving a four-wheel drive vehicle, and you come across a snow drift, then a four-wheel drive is really, really gonna come in handy. So I really, really think that it's worth the extra investment. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Jeannie, it's expensive rent a car in Iceland. But you get a very, very exciting special just from knowing me. You're welcome. That is that I have partnered up with Blue Car Company to help you guys save a bunch of money on your car rental. I know, I know, I know, it's amazing. 
So let me tell you all about it. If you're coming to Iceland and you're renting a car, doesn't matter if it's summer or winter, all you have to do is head to Blue Car Rentals website and select the vehicle that you're interested in and at the checkout page, enter hashtag blue LWV in the coupon discount box. So yes, it does all have to be capital letters and yes, it has to include the hashtag, but this will save you 7% on your car rental. I mean, you're talking about a couple hundred dollars of savings, you guys, this is amazing. Yay, saving money. Woo, woo, woo. We love saving money. So definitely, definitely take advantage of that deal. As you guys know, I only partner up with the Icelandic companies that I truly believe in. I've hand selected Blue Car to suggest to my audience because they are a local Icelandic company. I really trust them. They offer an amazing product and they have such great customer service. All right, next up, something that's super important is having a plan B. Now, I'm all for making plans about your road trips, especially when it comes to winter. You cannot wing it in the winter. But having a plan B is so important because of the things that we just talked about. You could have a big snowstorm that rolls in, or you could have some high winds that, you know, block off the roads, and this does happen. So I know it would be such a bummer if you can't get to Yokusolan. I understand. But trust me, they only will close off the roads or advise you not to travel if it's serious. So if they say that, listen, because it's for your own safety. Having a plan B allows you to say, okay, well we get to do this or we get to see this thing instead. So always, always have a backup plan. It's super important for winter travel. You guys are gonna wanna head to the website road.is to check these road conditions. So my advice is to first thing in the morning before you make your plans for the day or head out on the road, check out the driving conditions from that day. So their website is really easy to use. It's broken up by region and each road will have a color on it. And that color indicates whether it's extra slippery or it's covered in snow or in some cases it's closed. So you always wanna check this website before you head out for your travels. Last but not least, emergency situations happen, right? Things happen when you travel. The thing that you need to remember is you can call 112 in the case of an emergency. So whether you have a flat tire, or you get stuck in a snow drift, or you get lost, or any of those situations, you're gonna wanna call 112, let them know of your position, and then they can send someone out to help you. There's an app that's called the 112 app that you can download before your trip. And that's really, really nice because you can ping the location that you're at before you even start your travels so that in the case of a big emergency, then they know where you're at. That's all for today, Team Iceland. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because there are so many more helpful videos coming your way soon and you do not want to miss them. Also, if you guys are not yet on the Team Iceland newsletter, make sure to head to the link in the description below and sign up for that. My newsletter is packed full of extra tips and tricks for you guys and planning your travels. And it's where I also offer exclusive discounts and giveaways that no one else has access to. If you have a topic that you want me to talk about in a future video, don't be afraid, leave it in the comments below and I would love to make a video just for you. I'll see you guys next week. And as always, happy planning.